in this episode of Viral Rewind, we're looking at the LSD DOS virus. Now you would have actually seen a preview of this in my last video that I did on the Digi DOS virus, where you saw the effects of LSD beforehand. So, what does the LSD virus do? Well, there's nothing really special about it. It just resides on your system. However, you got it likely from a bulletin board service, or BBS board as it's called. And you end up running it, it does its business, and then you've got corrupted files in your root directory, which is usually the C drive. So, before we get to that, let's get a little bit of context of what's going to be happening here. So we've got MS-DOS 6.2 running on this system. It's the same Packard Bell 486 machine I showed the Digivirus on that was messing up Windows 95. So let me go into the edit command. So we're going to look at a couple of files right now that's going to end up getting infected by LSD. So we'll look at our auto exec batch. So this is the normal commands that it has for getting ms 6.2 started. There's also Windows for Workgroups 3.11 on here as well. So some of these commands are also for getting that running. Look at the config sys file. As you can see, we got some Windows stuff in there, including our CD-ROM and mouse drivers. Let's look at ms-dos.sys. And there's only so much we can see in the ms-dos system file, but you see there's stuff there, but stuff that can't be displayed. Same thing with io.sys. Got stuff in there. So, we got a couple things now. Also, before I get too far ahead here, I want to copy readme.txt to the root. So that we have a readme file in the root directory there. Find my disk. Again, LSD also doesn't have any kind of triggering method like a specific date or time. It's just running of the program executes its payload. So, let's say for instance, you went onto a BBS board. You needed someone to supply you with a reboot.com file because for some reason you don't have one and you need to have the ability to have a program reboot your computer. And they say, oh, here you go. You can have that. And they decide, well, I'm going to give you LSD. Well, it's not going to let me do that, is it? Oh, well, copy copy is not going to work. Let's do this the right way. Ah, that's much better. So, someone gives you your reboot.com off the BBS board, masquerading really as lsd.com. Go into a DOS directory where we copied it. And as you can see, we have reboot.com there which is, as you know, really lsd.com. So, he said, ah, I got my file, now I'm gonna make use of it. You run it. Oops. So what you get is a couple strings of garbage text there. It also makes a little printout from the virus author, and then it goes right to this plasma effect graphical payload. And on this 486 machine, it runs a bit fast. If it's on a 286 or 386, it'll be a little bit slower and smoother. But if you press a key, clears that graphical payload, gives you the LSD Virus 1.0, coded by Death Dealer, April 29th, 1994. Tempest 94, probably trying to put some kind of copyright in there. I don't really understand how copyright applies to viruses, but whatever. So if we go back to our edit to look at those files that we just looked at, we're going to notice they look a little different. So let me go back to... Oh, by the way, that readme.txt file, this is what it normally looks like. It's the readme.txt file for MS-DOS 6.2. 
now that we've seen what it looks like normally, let's see what it looks like in the root directory. Feed me txt. And, hmm. You notice the beginning part of it's been overwritten by this bunch of things of ASCII 2 characters. And as we saw, LSD virus 1.0. Coded by Death Dealer, April 29, 94, Tempest 94, basically. That same output message we saw after the graphical payload is now copied to the beginning of every file, along with a bunch of essentially garbage characters. Again, it's just on the front there. Most of the readme file is pretty much all still here. It's just overwritten the beginning of the file. But if we go to obviously other ones like autoexec.bat, as you see, there's nothing in the autoexec.bat file except for those same lines. So that's been corrupted. Config sys. Same thing, everything's been wiped out in config sys. ms.sys. Same thing. Beginning part of ms.sys is gone. io.sys. Same thing. Garbage. And of course, other command files like command.com are just as equally screwed. As you see, command.com is corrupted as well. So everything that is in the root directory of the C drive is corrupted now. So if you have backups, you could restore those and potentially get it back working again. Everything that's in a directory is not touched by LSD. It's only the root directory, or C colon slash, like it's showing there, is what's affected. So obviously, if you attempt to restart the computer, if you've got these corrupted files, what do you think is going to happen? I've got System Commander on here because I have multiple operating systems like 95. But if we go down to MS.6.2 and try to load it, this is as far as we get. Again, as you saw, MS.DOS.Sys and IO.Sys got corrupted by LSD, and because of that, nothing happens. You know, you can have command.com corrupted and auto exec can fix this, but once MS.DOS and IO.Sys are corrupted, this is as far as you'll ever get with the OS trying to load. Another thing that LSD does that I didn't mention is it also removes all the file attributes. Usually msdos.sys for sure is a read-only system file, so it's not designed to be edited without changing its file attributes first. So what LSD does is it removes all the attributes, and that's how it's able to corrupt the file by overwriting that first part of it with that little piece of garbage text there along with the LSD string that we've seen. <laughs>